What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today it's time to get scalped because we are checking out the Lick Lighter Amplification Scalpel 50, a one channel, all American made monster. Let's do it. Alright guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar equipment, record it with a simple setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. Boop. So if you're into East Ander thrash riffs, dropsy hardcore riffs, and dudes that live to put the people around him in a constant state of cringe, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on the way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks! All right guys, so today uh, we are checking out an amplifier that I am actually extremely excited to have here on the channel. This is the Lick Lighter Amplification Scalpel 50 as we mentioned in the beginning of this video. And it is named this way because it is surgically tight. No, I'm just kidding. I actually have no idea why they named it the Scalpel 50, but that would be definitely one reason why it could be that name. The other reason is it gives you a surgical amount of precision over your tone. I'm literally just making all this up in the moment, but if you guys are unfamiliar with Lick Lighter Amplification, Michael is based here in the United States. He has been modding amps for a long, long time. You may have seen one of his badges on a modded Marshall or something like that somewhere along the line, but he also, for a while was making his own amplifiers and releasing his own amplifier line. It seemed like he kind of went away for a little bit, but he is kind of coming back with a vengeance. And part of that comeback is this Scalpel 50 model here. Real quick, before we get too far in the video, you guys should know this is a sponsored video. I am being paid in order to share this amplifier with you guys here on the channel. So feel free to take everything that I have to say with a grain of salt, more than fair to do so, but just know you're gonna get my honest thoughts and opinions as you always do. But for real, this is an amp that I'm excited to have here on the channel because I always love trying new stuff, especially when it comes to the smaller USA based companies making a unique product and that's what this is. Honestly, upon first playthrough of this amplifier, I can't really compare it too closely with anything. A lot of the time when I turn on an amp for the first time and play a couple power chords and stuff through it, I kind of immediately know where its heritage lies. But with this amplifier, that's not the case. I don't know what this is gonna be based off of. It kind of has its own voicing going on. It's got a very unique response. It's got a pretty unique mid profile and it doesn't really sound like anything else. So I don't wanna talk too much. I wanna dive into the tones as quickly as we possibly can. Just going over some of the features real quick before we do that. This is a single channel amplifier and it's for dirty boys only, much like myself, belligerent amateurs. This is the amp for you. Across the front panel here, we have depth and presence controls and then we've got our volume high mid low gain all that is pretty self-explanatory over here on the far side we've got an edge control what this seems like to me is that there are two different gain controls because the edge not only seems to control the body of the tone but it also seems to add some saturation as you turn it up much like on say like something in Marshall JCM 900 one of the one of the <laughs> One of the gain controls kind of controls how thick the amplifier gets on top of adding some saturation. And that is kind of what the edge control does here. If you dial it back, things get a little thinner, they get a little bit more precise, but you also lose some of that saturation. If you dial it up, the entire amp just kind of gets thicker overall, add some lows and low mids as well as saturation. And then finally down here on the bottom, We've got a two-way bright, bright cap switch. Yep, that's it. Right now we have it switched to the right and that seems to be the less bright of the two settings here in the middle. 
that is the switch being bypassed. And then here on the left, that is where all you genty boys and dudes who are tuning down are probably gonna live because it is ultra tight, ultra aggressive in that setting. But other than that, this thing has a tube buffered serial effects loop and that's pretty much it. There will be a run of 12 of these amplifiers available very, very soon that you can get your name on a list of if you wanna get in after this video is over. I will link down below to Licklighter's site where you can contact him or where you can get in on that run of 12 if you like what you hear. For the future, he also offers the option of custom Tolex as well as your choice between EL34 or 6L6 power tube. But price of this amplifier, gonna be $2,899. With all that out of the way, let's jump into the tones again. For that intro clip, I was using my Mesa traditional 1999 4x12 cabinet with the stock vintage 30s, SM57 on the V30s. I can already tell this is gonna be a rough video. And for the guitar, I am using my Epiphone Adam Jones 1979 Les Paul Custom with the Seymour Duncan distortion in the bridge. And we were boosting the amplifier with an electric eye audio mud killer, which is doing a really great job at cleaning up some of the low mids on this amplifier. This amp is very big and punchy in the low mids and experimenting with overdrives and stuff. I found overdrives that cut out a lot of those low mids are what really works for me on this amp. Here is that tone again, and then I'll click off the mud killer and show you guys going straight into the amplifier. <laughs> Dude, that sounds really, really good. And again, it doesn't really like immediately remind me of another amplifier. It's got a really unique sound going on. Let's kick off that overdrive. So even though the low mids have filled back in, the amp has overall got a little thicker and a little darker without the drive in front it's still tight, like it doesn't feel sloppy at all. And if I had the right guitar and the right cabinet, I feel like I could go straight into this thing with no problem. And that's with the bright switch on this left-hand side, which is the tightest and the brightest setting. So to really get it tight, all I would have to do is pull this edge back a little bit, dial the actual gain on the amplifier up a little bit. <laughs> Minimal effort needed to kill the overdrive and to get a tight tone right out of the amplifier. I'm sure we could dial it in even more than that, but good Lord, is that tight and punchy for going straight in. I'm a huge fan of this thing already, if you guys can't tell. Really, really digging it. But let's do what we normally do. Let's grab a different guitar. Let's see if we can get some low gain tones out of this, and then we'll move through some different pickups, some active pickups, some lower tunings, and really see what this thing is capable of. I really like how this sounds though. So let me do one more quick tone and dial this thing in for ultimate tightness without an overdrive out front. <laughs> This amp has some serious growl to it. It's got a very like modern thing going on with the mids. It's got that very throaty like ar, ar, ar. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just trying to describe sounds here. This thing is a lot of fun, man. So, all right. Lower gain tones, let's do the loser stuff now. All right guys, I have my Grisenia Guitars Royale here and we have the amp dialed in as you guys see here on the screen and it's definitely got a really like bright, open mid plexi style tone going on the way that we currently have it set up. All right, 
So as you can see, the way that I have it set up, it's very bright. It kind of has that like plexi type bite to the top end, really open mids. But if we wanted to dial it in completely differently, the mid, the high and the presence are all very sensitive on this amplifier. So we could totally get a different tone if we wanted by dialing the mid back, dialing the presence down and dialing the highs up. So as you can see, we got two completely different low gain sounds out of the amplifier by just messing with the controls a little bit. Uh, it's a little fatter, a little bit more subdued like this, and the mid profile is a little bit more different. So just because it's a single amplifier doesn't mean that you're limited to only being a one trick pony. This thing will definitely cover more ground. Let's test how it reacts to the volume control on the guitar. <laughs> So responds well to the volume. So if you want to roll it down and get a little bit more of a clean tone out of it, you can. It's not totally cleaning up, but to be fair, we do have a lot of a pretty good amount of gain on the amplifier right now. So I think if you fine tune things a little bit more, you would be able to get what you want out of it in that regard. But let's kind of take a look at this edge control because this edge control is actually doing a lot right now. The way that we have it dialed in, it's kind of 50% and this is where it seems to be the most balanced. <laughs> But if we dial that back, you're gonna notice how much things thin out and get less saturated. And then if we dial it up, things are gonna get really, really thick and that saturation is gonna come in. And even just doing that kind of reminds me more of like a rectifier type tone. So if we were to bump the presence up and the depth. Because we have those mids under noon, it is giving us a little bit more of a scoopy tone. If we bump those mids above noon, see how much more mid content that we get. Like I said, everything in here, everything in this amp, very, very interactive. So there's gonna be a lot of tones available, but if we're playing this thing with no drive in front of it, we wanna pull that edge back. We wanna get the gain on the amplifier up and I wanna pull that high control back a little bit, pull the mids back a little bit. Still tight, even though we're not in that bright setting that tightens everything up significantly. Let's move to that setting now. More tight, a little bit more upper mid aggression, and then finally, the other bright setting. Tightens things up, but not quite. quite as much. This one seems to focus more on the overall mids as opposed to the upper mids the that it does more, in the gets brighter pretty quick. Uh, the presence is responsible more for that top end sizzle, top that down. blanket over the speakers being pulled off. So you really have to kind of fine tune and balance those two to work together. But if you want the amp to sound a little more open, dial the highs up. So very bright like that, but all we got to do is pull that presence back just a little bit. I hit my friggin' funny bone. So as you can see, the amp can be really bright if you want it to, but it can also be kind of pulled back. So yeah, lots and lots of tonal options here, guys. This is a fun amp. Let's pull the highs up. Let's dial the mids back just a tad and let's get just a little sizzle on that present. So the way that we have it currently dialed in, it is very, very chewy on the low mids. Let's see if we pull that edge back and pump the gain up, if we can kind of get it a little bit tighter. Ah! 
This amp is fun. All right, let's try some active pickups, move away from the passives and see how it responds to those. All right, guys, we are starting off with an EMG 81 in the bridge of my Schefter Solo Hellraiser 6 Extreme. I got that wrong. <laughs> the strings at the end there i don't even care this amp sounds incredible with an emg like straight in that is probably the best tone that i've gotten yet and i don't even really like emgs all that much so uh let's try a fishman fluence now all right guys fishman fluence fluff signature pickup in this we are in the active voicing here's the same riff <laughs> So that one's a little squishier, not quite as tight and punchy, a little bit more subdued. Let's see if this thing can handle an active pickup and an overdrive because some amps can't. Some amps get a little bit over, over driven, overwhelmed, over and out. Handles all the output in the world just fine. It is not getting overloaded whatsoever. The Sam sounds awesome, man. I really, really dig it. Let's try a drop C guitar. All right, guys, I have the Grisenia Guitars Nero Empress Standard here with a Seymour Duncan Pegasus in the bridge. No, Sentient. Whichever one is the bridge pickup out of that setup, I can't remember. The amp is dialed in, as you guys see here. I have a Boss SD1 on in front of the amp, and it sounds like this. <laughs> That sounds great for a drop C hardcore tone. This amp has a really, really cool, like modern attack to it. The amp itself doesn't sound super modern, but the way that the strings sound when you strike them with the pick, it's got this kind of like, like this kind of clanky modern attack to it. But I like that. In a lot of other modern sounding amps, I don't like that because it's too much with the upper mid profile. With this amp, man, it's balanced out really nicely and it just gives it just a really metallic and mean sounding attack. <laughs> Yeah, that's really, really cool, man. I really dig that for the hardcore type tones. Last but not least, let's get stupid low. All right, guys, last but not least, we have the Grisenia Royale something. I actually don't remember the model name of this guitar. I'm sorry. Maybe the Royale Nero baritone. It's a, it's a baritone. It's a long boy. We've got Fishman Fluence Modern Ceramic pickups in this thing, and we are tuned to drop stupid. We still have the Boss SD1 on in front, and the amp is dialed in, as you see here on your screen. Let's rock.
you can see, we are a little bit on the dry side as far as gain goes, but we've got plenty of note definition. That attack is still there. If you wanted to tighten things up even more, but still add gain, you could do that by pulling the edge back, dialing the gain up. Or if you wanted to thicken things up overall, you could just bump the edge up and have more gain and more thickness. I'm having way too much fun. It is actually against the law here in the state of Pennsylvania to have this much fun at work. So with that, I'm gonna call it guys. What did you think about this amplifier? What did you think about the tones? I was able to get out of it. What did you think about the overall appearance, the build quality, and what did you think about the price? Let me know down below in the comments of this video. I'm actually really, really curious to hear what you guys think about this amplifier on your end. I really do think that this is a very unique sounding amp, uh, very unique looking amp. This thing is gonna turn heads whether you're looking at it. That doesn't really make sense, but I think you understand. Or whether you're playing it and somebody hears it because it's a really, really cool, really unique sounding amplifier. And I honestly really enjoyed the amp, especially plugging straight in, man. There's not a lot of amps that I say that about. This is one of them. Plugging straight into this amplifier sounded really, really good to me. If I had to knock it anywhere, I would say the low mids may be a little bit too thick for me. I like the low mids carved out around three to 600 hertz. And I would also like just a tad more low end punch when the low end was turned up. Maybe, you know, just a little bit in the 100 to the 125 hertz range just to give it a little bit more of that percussiveness, per, 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 percussiveness that I personally like out of my amplifiers and my tones. But honestly, it's damn close and an EQ in the loop could easily fix those things and turn this into, in my opinion, one of the best sounding amplifiers that has graced this studio. I'm gonna get out of here. If you guys wanna check these out, check the links down below in the description and in the comments. I will make sure to link the website for Lick Lighter Amplification so you guys can check it out. Get yourself on that list of 12 if you really liked it or spec out your own custom build with Michael. Do whatever the hell you want. I personally don't care. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed because we got tons of awesome content and some really big stuff coming for the channel. Kyle here again. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. My back. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.